Hey guys, and welcome back to week five, I think. Our initial goal is to complete the van build in two months, which is a total of eight weeks, meaning that this right here, what you're looking at behind me, is exactly the halfway point of our build. So we're starting this week off really strong by building out our dinette bench seat. So in preparation for today, Natalie and I spent honestly about two hours yesterday preparing this. This is a complete guide to the dinette that we're gonna make. It's based pretty heavily off of the dinette benches we had made for the bus build, but we just needed to add a couple accommodations to match the van dimensions. And so as you can see here, we have the main dinette bench, and then a couple people guessed this in the comments before, but we will have a lifted uh, foot section, I guess you could call it, that will help match the dinette bench to the driver's seat so that they're at the same height. And yes, we are planning on adding a flip up cabinet there for some extra storage. After we got that done, the next step was just to go through and have a complete list of all the cuts we need to make. So without any more procrastinating, let's get these cuts done. So I think we've got all the cuts that we need. And this is kind of what the silhouette of the bench is gonna look like. You can kind of picture it. It looks super funky seeing the shape in 2D, but it's gonna look so much more natural once we put the pieces on. It's not gonna look like this piece is so skinny. All right, now for the fun part. Fall apart <laughs> as we move it. If this thing looks pretty, it, if it's anything, it's sturdy. Yeah, this thing looks very sturdy. <laughs> this will be our very first test. All right, All right. who wants to sit on it first? Or we could both sit both on Both sit it. on the same time. Ultimate test. All right, you ready? Ready. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I'm a, ready. That was a test. Yeah. Ooh. I'm so glad we did the angled seat yeah, again. So in almost every way, this is exactly the same dimensions we used for the bus dinette bench, except it is five inches taller to match the height of the driver's seat and instead of being 34 inches wide, it is 24 inches wide, which is definitely smaller, but the width of the van is about two feet less than the width of the bus. So we need to cut corners somehow, and uh, I'm not too disappointed. I think, uh, I think it still fits one person very comfortably. I like that. Or two people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we wanted to test it with the Nature's Head composting toilet because that's what we're gonna be using in the van. We don't have the new one yet, so we went and grabbed our Nature's Head composting toilet from the bus just to do a, a little dry fit. And uh, <laughs> if that's not snug, I don't know what is, like in a good way. This panel right here will have hinges that'll flip up this way that'll act as like another privacy shield. The only thing we have to like kind of be mindful of is when you get the, uh, the liquids tank out. I'll spare you from the details, but like, in this orientation, we can pull the tank out. And that'll leave us enough room in the corners for things like toilet paper, our shower caddies, cleaning supplies, just really anything else like bathroom related. And uh, I, yeah, I just think it looks good. Just a weird thing to say about your toilet, but it, it does look good. <laughs> I love how that looks in the space. It looks like it's a little bit shorter than the driver's seat, but we're gonna put a four inch cushion on top of it. So this should be much more flush once we have that ready. 
<laughs> Jimmy, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I was uh, showing how tall we'll be with the cushion. Uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So the dinette bench is looking good. We are going to paint it, but we'll wait until tomorrow to do that. But before we go home tonight, there's one more thing we wanted to work on. So we want to say a massive thank you to our patrons, Bob and Debbie. We mentioned a couple of videos ago that we really wanted to install a swivel seat for our passenger chair like we did for the driver's seat, but because of our budget constraints, we were going to hold off and maybe do that after we hit the road. But they did not want us to go without a swivel, so they gifted us with one, which is very kind of them. So we're going to install that right now. <laughs> this is how we've been relaxing uh, the last couple of weeks, so yeah. it'll be good to... We're going to have, with the new bench, we'll have a little... A little cozy little area. I know. We'll have to make a friend or something. Impossible. That's, <laughs> that sounded sad. <laughs> so this is our second swivel install, so I can kind of talk a little bit about it. These two swivels are from the Scopima brand, and I really like these because they have a really large hole in the middle that it'll swivel around. And this is really nice because there's airbag cables that you need to uh, thread through this swivel. And a lot of swivels don't leave room for that. So this one is really nice. And uh, the install is pretty simple. There are six holes with bolts. You unscrew them from here, pop the chair off, plop this in, and then basically just bolt this swivel in between the chair and the uh, chair mount itself. I know that sounds crazy easy, but when we did the swivel install for the bus, we got a non-custom swivel, and so we had to pre-drill our own holes to actually bolt through. This one is made solely for ProMasters, and so it fits exactly with the ProMaster chairs. So now we're just getting ready to disconnect the airbag cables so that we can run them through the swivel. But before we do that, we're gonna have to go ahead and unplug the battery so that we disconnect everything in the van just in case and so that we don't accidentally blow an airbag because that could be really bad. I love this. This is nice. <laughs> so, nice. <sighs> so many seating options in here now. This is actually really nice. Yeah. We have two more seats in our living area than when we started the day. It really does open up the space. I think this is a good place to end it for today. We'll pick you back up tomorrow. And once again, thank you so much to uh, Bob and Debbie for supplying us with our second swivel seat. <laughs> so yesterday we pretty much just did busy work all day. We started to put some coats of white paint on the dinette bench, and we also went ahead and bought a nice teak board that we'll be using for the dinette tabletop. So we started to seal that, and that should be ready in the next day or two. And third, we also went ahead and framed out the raised foot platform that we'll be using for the dinette. So we've got this framed out. It matches with the top of the metal framing here perfectly, and it'll sit flush with the dinette bench, which we've got that here. And we don't have it yet, but we're going to add hinges so that a portion of this can raise up and we'll have two little cubbies underneath. Not sure what we'll use those for yet. Since there's two of them, maybe it'll be a nice his and hers uh, canned goods storage. I have no idea. <laughs> we eat the same stuff. They're my green beans. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're just gonna start by slapping some coats of paint on our new framing, our dinette bench. And once we've got that rolling, we're gonna start on our next project for the week, which is overhead cabinets. So we decided to go with a teak board for our dinette tabletop. We've never actually used teak before, but it was just so pretty that we decided not to even bother trying to stain it. It's also a little bit, um, when we're researching, I can't tell if you're even supposed to stain it or if you're supposed to seal it. We're sealing it anyway because we like the nice semi-gloss finish of a water-based polyurethane. Uh, so we're going for it, which is a little risky, but uh, it just is such a pretty piece of wood. I'm actually really excited about it.
So we're about to start on the overhead cabinets, but we realized one thing first. And to keep it brief, we'll have the overhead cabinets above the kitchen and this side of the bed. But before we put that up there, we want to make sure we have a support beam that runs kind of horizontally that can support some of the cabinet weight. We're about to go ahead and put that beam up so that we can get some accurate measurements of how big these cabinets are actually going to be. But we realized uh, we haven't painted over the screw holes yet. So we've got Natalie going around painting those up so that uh, these shiplap boards will be nice and finished which is kind of a fun thing to add on to this week because I wasn't really planning on getting that done this week. So once those are dry or at least dry enough, we'll start putting up the support beam and taking some measurements for the overhead cabinets. All right. Sick. That is very solid. Awesome. Hope that fits. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna need a little more than that, yeah. but it, it's a good start. <laughs> good start. <laughs> One thing that I'm not sure how well it comes across is how long it takes and how tedious it can be to get all of the measurements and cuts right for building structures like overhead cabinets. We have six different plywood boards cut out to different shapes and sizes and eight different uh, pine boards that are gonna be used for trim. And it can take a while to come up with the measurements and get them all ready to go. But now that we have them all cut out and prepped, this is kind of the fun part where we get to work on assembling all of it together and we get to see it take shape. got a little unlucky with this one. The pine board started to split as we were screwing in the pocket holes. So that's not gonna work. We have just enough wood left over to redo it one time. So Jimmy's gonna go make another cut that's this size and we're gonna replace this board and try one more time. All right, our last chance at this. All right. No fracking. Much better. Now the fun part. I'm just nervous that it won't fit. We have like three different types of cuts and they all need to fit. We've got the base, the supports, and the base frame. And of course the van itself. Yeah, that's true. So a lot of pieces gotta come together. <laughs> The dry fit was a success. Good job. All right, so we are exhausted. It's almost morning at this point and we have spent all night doing coats of paint, poly, stain, and now we finished the overhead cabinet framing, I guess. I mean, it's pretty much done. We just need to put some coats of paint on it. So we'll pick you back up when that's done. So this is it. This is what we've been working towards. We are gonna start actually installing the dinette that we have been trying to get ready all week. So we're gonna break this down into three separate installations. We've got the chair itself, we've got the raised foot platform with the hidden compartment, and then we've also got the table. So we'll start with the table wall. Before we install anything there, we wanna go ahead and finish up the outlet. I think probably my favorite thing about this entire dinette building experience is the fact that Jimmy keeps calling the floor the foot platform. <laughs> That huh? cracks me up every time he says it. I'm like, it's a floor, Jimmy. That's such a common word. It's a raised floor. It's a raised floor. That's true. It is a, just a foot platform just sounds ridiculous, but I love it. Ugh. 
That is a really fun part of this week is we have a lot of cosmetic touches that we're completing. We're just kind of getting to see our hard work start to pay off. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on installing the dinette bench and the floor platform that we've made. We assembled the floor platform with like a bunch of pocket screws and we also have some hinges for a flip up storage compartment that we're pretty excited about. And for both the bench and the floor platform, we're planning on installing it using these L brackets. So they're pretty easy to use and I think it'll be really secure. That looks really cute. Yeah. That's, that's a foot pedestal right there. My feet are going to dangle no matter what we do. Yeah. <laughs> That's looking really cute so far. I love it. The foot platform kind of reminds me of like an opera cake or like a baby grand piano or something like that. Just just because of the color and the composition of it, but in a good way. Those are both cool things to look like. All right, so this looks good. This is what we're doing. Yeah. I'm just going to get in real quick. Got to do what you got to do. <laughs> You've probably heard of a jack-in-the-box, but I bet this is something you haven't seen before. Uh, you're funny today, man. <laughs> I know. So now for the fun part. We've got the seat that's gonna go here, something like that, but Obviously it's not done yet. We're gonna go use another room in the makerspace that we haven't actually been able to use that much, and that is the sewing room. So we're gonna go up there and attempt to upholster this. I don't know if this is uh, how you're supposed to use this, but... <laughs> Looks like it works. It'll give me a straight line. We're gonna cut this foam using just some plain scissors. That is just not off to a good start at all. <laughs> all right, there's a there's like a little mini saw in the workshop I could go get. Oh yeah, that would probably work really well. All right, I'm gonna go get that. You know, this is a pretty menacing thing to walk around with <laughs> in the dark. I was literally carrying it like this, oh. so I don't spook anyone if there's anyone else out here. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> this is, if you see a shadow like this standing there, I think it looks a little scary. That's all right. It may not have been totally necessary to come inside and use the sewing room just to make a cut and then, up, well, we're upholstering something. It might be worth it. It's fun to have an excuse to come in here because we usually don't. nothing. I would sit down on it, but my overalls are covered in sawdust, so I don't really want to get this dirty quite yet. So the next and final thing we have to do, this is the last thing, right? Uh, it needs to be the last thing. It's like 6 a.m. Yeah. And we're pretty tired. <laughs> so we're gonna attach the brackets to the table and mount that finally. Yeah, it's the last piece of the dinette. Of I think. the dinette. And then we've got the upper cabinets right after that. Yep. Almost done for tonight. Yeah, busy week. This is busy. I hope it fits. Oh yeah, it's looking like it will. Yeah? Hey, that's pretty good. Nice. Look at that. And you want the table and you just that. Oh, Ooh. you got a table. Cute. Oh, that's awesome. I gotta put down our little blanket because I don't want to ruin our couch. <laughs> <sighs> this is nice. nice. So as much as we'd like to stay here and relax on our new dinette, there's one more thing we wanted to put up and that is the finished overhead cabinets. Now they don't have faces on them, but we've got the framing done and the paint is dry. So we're gonna go ahead and install them. 
<laughs> it's all just coming Yay. together in this 30 minute period. <laughs> I'm gonna take you away from the dinette. Aww. Aww. Oh. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> You should be able to let go. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's pretty good, right? <laughs> How's it look? Really good. Really? Yeah. You're not just saying that? No. So what do you guys think? What score out of 10? <laughs> I'd say, I honestly, like nine out of 10, nine, maybe nine and a half out of 10 based on our skill level. There's a little bit of a gap up here. We had the same issue in the bus and you know, you just put trim around it and it's not really a big issue. It's just starting to come together all of a sudden. Cause uh, like two hours ago, we didn't have a dinette or a table or overhead cabinets. And now we kind of have all of those. This week has been super exciting. Having a dinette is just something that's super important to us because it gives you so many options. We can sit there to work. We sit there most of the time to eat. Mostly to eat. Mostly to eat, but we get a little work done too. It's just fun to have part of the living space done. I still can't wait to trim it out. We still have to finish the window framing and just get that perfectly done. And uh, of course we've got like decorations we're gonna put up later. So it's looking pretty bare bones right now, but I love the colors. I love the wood color that we chose and the flooring. I think it looks really good. And I think it'll tie in really well with the kitchen later. I hope so. We'll find out next week, hopefully. I think that's our plan next week. We want to do the whole kitchen, so. <laughs> yeah, don't hold us to it, but that's the plan. Hold us to it. We, sh we need to do it. <laughs> but this is where we're going to call it. And we want to say thank you so much for watching. We had a lot of fun this week, and hopefully you did too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, that's why you gotta watch the Great British Baking Show with me. I'll show you a picture. You're gonna agree with me so fast. Like glossy dark chocolate, okay. and then they write the word opera on it. Because <laughs> <Bye. laughs> it's an opera cake.